Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. The nervous system uses two different kinds of cells. One is called glial cells, and those are the ones that help support and maintain the other cells. And those other cells are the neurons, the ones that are considered the quintessential nervous system cell. And what makes them different from glial cells is they're the ones that are specialized for sending signals. A few of the glial cells have demonstrated the ability to do some messaging back and forth, but we focus in on the neurons as the ones that are involved in communication. Now there's a couple ways that you can classify them. One is by function. What do they do? Sensory neurons, they're the ones that are picking up information about the sen from the senses and sending signals to the central nervous system, i.e. sending it up to the brain or spinal cord. Motor neurons are the ones that are carrying out the orders, sending out the information or signals from the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. So a motor neuron is the one that sends a signal to a muscle saying, contract or it's a motor neuron that goes down to a gland and says, release a hormone. Interneurons are the ones that collect those signals that are coming in from the sensory neurons and then deciding whether or not to send out the signals by way of the motor neurons. So they're located in the central nervous system. You won't find interneurons outside in the peripheral nervous system. Now structurally, you can identify neurons based on what do they look like. Some of them are called multipolar because they have lots of collecting fibers with one sending out fiber. These collecting fibers are called dendrites. The sending out fiber is called an axon. I'll go into that a little bit more in depth momentarily. Bipolar have one fiber acting as a dendrite, one fiber acting as an axon. Now these fibers here may branch out in there, but there's one dendrite coming in ultimately one axon going out with the bipolar. Unipolar, you have the main cell body sitting aside as you have the dendrite collecting in information and the cell body doesn't make any decisions about whether or not to send the signal. It just comes in and zips out via the axon. Now, let's take a look at this diagram here and focus in on the anatomy of a neuron. So, if you think back, hey, is this multipolar, bipolar, or unipolar? Well, hey, there's the axon here, the dendrites. There's a lot of these dendrites. This is multipolar. So you have the main cell body, which is where you'd find the nucleus. And this is where you have the basic cell machinery. You'd have the majority of the endoplasmic reticulum and all those other things located there. And the dendrites are here. The dendrites are the parts of the neuron that collect in the signals. They're like the ears of the neuron. Right? They take in data. The cell body is where you get a lot of the processing of that data. You collect in a bunch of signals from all the dendrites, and then the cell body says, mm, yes, we shall send a signal. Just like your ears collecting data, your brain decides, I shall send out the information. And to do that, you use your mouth. The neuron uses this long axon here. Now you see there's these things called Schwann cells wrapped around this axon. The Schwann cells are filled with this kind of fat called myelin. And each Schwann cell, named after Dr. Schwann, I assume, wraps itself around that, and it forms this sheath of myelin. Myelin is a kind of fat, and what this does is it greatly speeds up the transmission of electrical signals called action potentials as they go along the neuron. Now, in between each Schwann cell, you have these nodes called nodes of Ranvier. Now, that's French. It's not nodes of Ranvier. It's Ranvier. So, an action potential or nerve signal will come along the dendrite and then the cell body will say yes, send along and it'll go and then along. These action potentials travel along membranes but they can jump from node to node to node. When they reach the end of the axon, called the axon terminal, then it has to use another means of communication to send its signal to the next cell. Now, Actually, I want to briefly highlight that, that neuron communication can be in the form of an action potential or in the form of a neurotransmitter. An action potential is used along the surface of one neuron because it travels along its membrane and it's a sequential in and out of uh, sodium and potassium ions in each regional area of the neuron membrane. And because one neuron doesn't share the membrane with its neighbor, that's why it cannot use action potentials to communicate with the next cell. Instead, it has to release a chemical. 
at these connections between one neuron and the next neuron, or a neuron and its effector cell, like a muscle or a gland. And these neurotransmitters are these chemical signals. Let's take a look to see how they work. So here we have one neuron, a multipolar neuron. Here's another multipolar neuron. This must be somewhere in the brain or spinal cord, since we have all these multipolar multipolar neurons communicating with each other. And the action potential zips along this axon here until it reaches here. This is a synapse, a connection between a neuron and its target cell. What happens is that you have these sacs of chemicals called neurotransmitters. Some examples of these would be dopamine or acetylcholine. And when the action potential reaches the end here, it causes these sacs to merge with the outer membrane, dumping the chemical out. On the receiving neuron, it has receptor proteins that have the right shape to fit that particular neurotransmitter. As a side note, a lot of um, chemicals actually can act like these neurotransmitters. Caffeine, for example, doesn't act like these neurotransmitters, but it blocks the receptor for a neurotransmitter called a, um, AMP. It's a way that you, or ad adenine, it's how you detect whether or not you're tired. By blocking that signal, your brain says, I must not be tired. That's why caffeine helps wake you up. Other chemicals, like cocaine, blocks the ability to get rid of the neurotransmitter. And that's why uh, cocaine can cause these weirdly high levels of signals in your brain that cause the chemical high of cocaine. So this is one of the reasons why you've got to be kind of careful with some of the chemicals that you may be using because you're interfering with the normal communication between the neurons of your brain, which can interfere with all sorts of other things going on in your body. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> to be... Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. <laughs> <laughs>